Once we can use the equations of constant acceleration to look at motion in one dimension, the next step we've got is to look at uh, things which are being projected in two dimensions, i.e. things that have been dropped but thrown sideways at the same time. Um, and this is about vertical and horizontal motion at the same time. What we need to be able to do is to describe the motion of a particle when it's projected horizontally, to use this to find how far a particle will go, what we call its range, and then to be able to look at things which are projected at angles to work out where they're going to go. So the first stage of this is just to remind ourselves that if something's dropped, we need to be able to work out how long it takes to hit the ground. So here's something dropped from 122.5 metres. Just like we did before, we can do SUVAT. There's our data. If we use the equation without a V in it, because we don't want to know about V, we can do the maths on that and we end up finding it takes five seconds to hit the ground. So we're already okay with that. If we drop something from 122.5 meters, it takes five seconds to hit the ground. There it goes. So the question to understand is, what would happen if we threw it five meters per second at the same time? So instead of just dropping it, I'm throwing it to the right at five meters per second. Well, there is no horizontal force, and therefore there is no horizontal acceleration, so the velocity stays at 5 meters per second. So if we look at the path that it follows, it falls exactly the same distance as this one does each second, but it goes 5 meters sideways. This creates this curved path, this parabolic path. So if you look at the lines there, these are all level, but horizontally, all of these distances are 5 meters. It's going 5 meters every second horizontally. Okay, there's the path that we actually see. So once we understand that, really the questions aren't too bad. If we throw something from 2 metres high and we throw it at 20 metres per second, how far from the throw will it hit the ground? Well, we forget that we're throwing it sideways, we just pretend we've dropped it. That's going to tell us how long it's going to take to hit the ground. So we just do SUVAT, 2 metres high. We're dropping it, so the initial velocity is zero. We don't care about the final velocity. The acceleration is 9.8, and times what we want to know. Notice I could have used minus 2 and minus 9.8, but if I'm just taking positive as being downwards this time, that's fine. Look for the equation without v in. So we just do the maths and the algebra that we need, and we find that it takes 0.64 seconds to hit the ground. So then the second question is, OK, so... If it takes 0.64 seconds to hit the ground, how far will it go sideways? Well, this is where we use our 20 meters per second. Okay, notice I didn't use that anywhere in here. It didn't make any difference to how long it took to hit the ground. Okay, but this is just distance equals speed times time. 20 times 0.64. It take it goes 12.8 meters sideways before it hits the ground. If you're not throwing it horizontally, if you're projecting it upwards at some angle. Okay, with all the things that we do with vectors, the key thing is not to try to do a very complicated calculation here, but just to split it into its two components. So we find the horizontal velocity and the vertical velocity, and then we treat those as completely separate calculations. So the horizontal velocity is 20 cos 30, 17.3. The vertical velocity is 20 sine 30, 10 meters per second. So if we look at this analysis, what we've got is it's going upwards at the start at 10 meters per second. So again, we can do our SUVAT on it, We've just got to be a bit more careful. To hit the ground, the height will have to be zero because it's starting from zero. It's also finishing at zero. But our u is now 10. v we don't care about. And we've got to be careful this time with the signs because this is upwards and this is downwards. So at least one of these has got to be negative. I've made the downwards as being negative. So the acceleration is minus. I want to know the time. Calculation looks a little bit trickier because the ut doesn't disappear, but you'll notice that this is a zero. We've got t in both of these, so we can cancel out the t's. If you do that, you end up with um, 4.9 is uh, times t equals 10, so 10, t is 10 divided by 4.9, 2.04 seconds. How far will it go in that time? Well, we know its horizontal velocity is 17.3, so it's traveling at 17.3 meters per second for 2.04 seconds, it's going to go 35.3 metres before it hits the ground.